Um, so what we do in our, our project where we get payment municipality to come in and open up this forum. And some of you are probably familiar with like the mine mixers of the world um, or other online platforms where they allow people to provide input. Um, one way in which we differentiate ourselves, and we're trying to figure out ways in which to scale this, which may be something that some of you can help with, is that when you put those online forums up, there's, there's no one on the other side. There's typically not anyone. Side. Um, the place to collect information, to collect uh, demographic data about your about your users. But there's nobody coming back at you in response to the questions you're asking. So, for instance, if somebody here says, "Well, my street is too traffic," I, I I don't trafficking can mean a lot of things. And you can't find it in the dictionary, so you have to go ask some questions. So, what does it mean, traffic? Well, it's, it's not a wide enough. Sidewalk for me and my friends to walk to the bus to, so we have to get drove, get driven to school, um, or cars go by too fast, and blah blah blah. So drilling down and asking them follow-up questions and that type of thing is important. So we go through not only an ideation phase but a, an analytical <coughs> phase where we follow up with A, B, or multiple choice questions. Um, next one, and then we start to illustrate it. Um, because a picture is worth a thousand words. And um, one of the failures of the community meetings that I uh, would be a part of myself run and manage was that they got a little too jargony. And maybe I'm being a little too jargony tonight. But when you see an image, um, you can start to relate to it. You can start to picture yourself standing on the corner. And they can start saying what you do or do not like about it. And go to the next one. If you iterate on that enough, um, one more, um, you start to get to something that people really like. Uh, that's pretty enough. Um, but it's something that people can get behind and they can champion themselves. Um, this is one of the intersections which had been overwhelmed with uh, drive through windows and strip centers. And the Chicagoland area's poorest performing uh, suburban Walgreens. Mm -hmm. store which opened uh, five years ago which is <laughs> nearly at uh, stage of closure. Um, so we're drooling over the opportunity to retrofit and do something more like what they what the community wants, which is that. Um, next one. So another thing that's you know funky about our name, um, and a lot of people try to try to figure out what it is and if we had some alcohol in the room in another hour I'd tell you the story behind it. Um, but Civic Art is, is, a, is a book that a lot of architects and planners used to use at the turn of the century. It kind of guided them through good and bad of developing a city, creating a city. And so I paid homage to that book, Civic Art, and then wanted to prove how it works. But the art piece that confuses people and that justified with the product that we put out is the comparison between um, this home, um, which I created at HOK for the uh, redevelopment of the Chicago or the uh, Children's Memorial Hospital in Lincoln Park um, at Halstead, Fullerton, and um, Lincoln. Sorry, yeah, thank you. Um, so this this was done uh, six years ago. It, has, it doesn't relate to what's actually happening there now. Um, but we um, this was a big inspiration for Civic Artworks. What worked and what didn't here inspired what we did here. And the alderman at the time, by daily, um, by it's no relation to the mayor, former mayor, um, I'm sure it didn't hurt. Um, she commissioned a study. Uh, she used her many funds that are available to her as an alderman to do a study before the developers came in, where we were tasked with asking everyone what you want to do and what you don't want to do with the site, because it's very important. I've been beat up enough in the past. Let's, let's do something about it. So. Her one charge to us without any development program, with anything, no other orders to talk to everyone. And this is the book that um, I was one of the primary authors for. But it's, but it's this, and it's like that. And for any John or Jane Doe out on the street, they're not going to read this. And it's great for us to, as planners and architects, to beat our chest about our ability to write novels about our projects, but it's the reality is the, the PDF of our Alderman's website download the master plan is not bedtime read for most of the public. Um, so back to the visualization piece, uh, the lesson learned and what we did in Plainfield was develop um, 
this, which you can see on the left, which is one sheet. Um, in my opinion, uh, it contains most of what you would need uh, to move things forward, um, at least from the city standpoint. But you have the two-dimensional two plan, the illustration that I showed you. Um, but maybe, maybe what's more interesting um, to everyone here is, is the data we collected about each other ideas, um, the analysis we dug in deep on, and the demographic information about who they were in order to prove out that this is important or that is important because it's representative of the people. Um, we had um, nearly, I mean, I really wanted it badly, but we didn't make it, but 342 community members and one 400. Um, the idea of a community this size, having anyone at a public meeting or you know, 10 or 20 people on any given night, depending on what controversial thing comes up, that's, that's the type of attendance we would have seen if we had done it in a traditional way. Um, with this, you know, the way we do things, more people it's open to more people and more people can contribute. Um, so anyway, yeah, what was wonderful about this um, that can't happen with what I showed you earlier is that once this was adopted by the village, um, two things two things happened over great. Um, one, they videotape all the council meetings out there, whether they're attended or not. And uh, the village uh, board members that doubted us first looked past us at our final, final presentation and congratulated not us, but the community. Um, it was awesome. And they, at first, I was taken aback because I thought, hey, well, we did all this great work. But then I thought, hey, no, really, seriously, they did all this work. Um, and so it was also an election year, so they took that opportunity to, to uh, get some brownie points. <laughs> the other thing that was great was um, that that next week, um, we made these posters available to the public at Village Hall. Um, we started seeing them posted up at Main Street store windows. Um, the Main Street goes perpendicular to the street we were working on. And um, they were using these like campaign posters. And those businesses and those residents were for this. And uh, it was, instead of the nasty vote no for X, Y, and Z ordinance that we're all voting on next week, it was a positive. This is what we want to do. Let's, let's, let's make something special happen. Um, you go to the next slide. Okay, 